Welcome to another episode of the White Collar Tradie Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Zebranik. Join me as I chat with some of the most interesting, inspirational and successful people I've been fortunate enough to meet throughout my life and through my business journey. Throughout these conversations, we'll dive into the mindset of our guests and uncover some of the tips, tools and strategies they've implemented in their business and their life that has helped shape their success and make them the all-round incredible humans they are. Please enjoy. Thanks for tuning in again to another White Collar Trady podcast. Uh, my guest on this episode is Matt Warner. Matt is a friend of mine who I've known for quite a while. He's a guy I really look up to. He's the managing director of Built Structural in Paraka, South Australia. He used to also run a carpentry business called Warner Constructions. He's a full of great advice. He's a guy I always turn to to chat business and work and life. And he's uh, really a fellow that, like I said, I really look up to. So I hope you guys get some value out of this podcast. I certainly learnt a lot while I was uh, hosting it with him. So thanks for tuning in again. Tell me about your early career, like how you got into... Because you've got a bit of a story, because right now you were in the built structural. Yep, yep. But I've got some you definitely branding. didn't start like that. Nah. So tell us about that. I, uh, um, tradie, full-blown tradie background, um, and uh, I, um, my dad asked me when I was 16 or 17, because he knew school wasn't going well, um, and he said, uh, do you want to be a, um, he goes, oh, I've got a, an old bloke, because um, dad was selling homes and whatnot, he says, an old bloke um, who's looking for a bricklaying apprenticeship, um, apprentice, mm. you want to do bricklaying? I'm like, no, I hate bricks. Yeah. You ever lifted a thousand bricks? No, but I wouldn't no, like to either. There's nothing to Do you think they're getting paid $3 it? a brick now? Oh man, they are killing it. You know what? Fair dinkum. found out yesterday. Send it. They, they, they have had a hard run mm. for like, in the oh, last yeah. decade. Yeah. And you know what? Cash them chips in. If, yeah. if that's what it is. Remember yeah. when a dollar a brick was like the the, oh. the thing where they were like, oh, they're getting a dollar a brick now. That's fancy. Now it's three. Yeah. I mean, I know inflation's gone up about twice as well, but, <laughs> yeah, you know, 200%. But. Yeah, yeah. 100%. The, um, yeah, so, yeah, am I getting to bricks? <laughs> <laughs> brick structural. Yeah, brick structural. <laughs> so, the, um, no, nah, so we, uh, I uh, said, no, nah, and, um, so I uh, started doing a little bit of maintenance and carpentry, etc. cetera. Um, and then I ended up doing first fix carpentry and loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. that was uh, my thing and um, did the so first fix, sorry, first fix is essentially so just building the frames. Framing. Yep. Yep. Framing. Timber framing. Yep. Um, Carry on. Sorry. And uh, no, no, don't apologize. <laughs> the, um, so uh, yeah, framing and uh, did that, enjoyed it. Um, and uh uh, then um, got through an apprenticeship, and then not long after that, I basically went out my own and started my own business. <clears throat> I so, figured, uh, as any uh, ambitious young lad says, uh, I can do anything. Yep. Um, so I went out on my own and well, f- that, and um, started doing everything. Yeah. And uh, how old were you at this point? Twenty-three. Okay. Um, didn't do well. No. Nah. end up hanging doors. Yeah. Like. I don't know how to hang doors, man. I'm a first fixer. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, those, what those skills don't exactly transfer over. No, you're no. a first fixer or you're a second fixer. Okay. There's, there are some people who are good at both. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, to be honest, I don't feel like there's a lot. The, a really good quality general builder, mm. like they, it's like that whole jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. And um, it doesn't happen that often, but you do get them. And there's some blokes who are really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then I started hanging doors and doing random stuff, putting chip rock on walls, and I was no good at it. And then I basically binned that and went on back. And my mate just happened to ring me and said, "Hey, can you come run a run some frames for me?" I'm like, "Yeah, sweet, no worries. I'll go do that." Yeah. Um, I said, "I'm sick of this. I've got to go." And um, so I went and back framing uh, for another six months, I reckon, with him, and then um, took on one of his clients. Um, I had a chat with him, and he said, "He goes, I can't deal with these people." Like, oh. Yeah, I just don't have the capacity. Yeah. I don't really want the capacity. So I said, yeah, cool. Um, he goes, you already run the jobs. He goes, just invoice them direct. Um, so I started that, got some mates in, um, started putting up some frames. Yeah. And uh, I thought we were doing really well. And we were doing really well, um, which was a lot of fun. And then um, basically from there, um, I, I, I had a, most my, uh, probably half my career, I suppose. So this is, I'm still like 25 odd. Um, and uh, most of my 
career I had two or three blokes working for me mm-hmm. um, and then I realised it's a lot harder that way so we ramped it up and I think we had nine, ten blokes um, okay. run two crews and that was, um, so you reckon that was, that was so that was easier like the, the sh- point was the a couple uh, was it? it is framing's way easier with five blokes okay um, and I suppose the, the style of frames that I really enjoy doing I just like getting in and getting them done mm-hmm. like getting a hurry on my boss bosses that I've worked for um, are very hard very uh, firm very consistent people mm-hmm. so a lot of repetition um so you prefer like the volume build frames? Yeah, we were, yeah, I'm um, yeah. happy with that. To be honest, like trying to upskill into custom homes, like a first and second year apprentice is a nightmare. Is it? The, um, so, well, at that point in time, because there wasn't a lot of good, yeah, good young lads mm. coming through. Mm. Um, so, but it was also probably a lot to do with me and just my lacking of ability and skills and knowledge and time of being able to train well. Mm-hmm. So there was a balance point of that where I had to be better. Yep. Um, so uh, we just did a lot of volume stuff and that was good. Um, I did a, a number of custom homes, done some very big homes. Um, did a very, very big home for Metricon. Um, that was good. Um, I enjoyed that one. Um, but uh, I think it was their second biggest home side of the um, director's home. Yeah? Um, yeah, in Adelaide, in Medindi. Um, so that was a fun job, that one. Mm-hmm. Um, Not the... Was it on the main nah, Victoria Terrace? No. Nah, or whatever it is there. No, nah, it's not Robe Terrace. No, yeah, right. um, not on Robe Terrace. Nah, not no, not on Robe Terrace. It's the other one that goes through the guts. Um, the People use it as a thoroughfare. It's pretty busy, but it's got yeah. some monster, monster blocks on there. Very nice. Yeah. The um, actually, the fun fact: the uh, when I was younger, the I was driving down along Robe Terrace with Dad, and uh, I reckon I would have been very early into my business, or if not a fourth year mm-hmm. or a third year, because that's probably the point where I thought I knew it all. The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens about third <laughs> yeah, year, third about or fourth year. Third year. <laughs> <laughs> the um, and uh, I was driving along looking at the houses, and I said, I love a big classic home, love it. Yeah. The um, and I said to Dad, I'm like, do you reckon any um, first fixers live in these homes? And I still remember it to this day. And um, Dad, uh, as a perfect father, has gone, oh, I'm sure there is definitely a couple of carpenters in there. <laughs> the, um, I think the other only other one was Mark Pickard, and he got out of there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, built uh, what is, uh, is what is now. The, but um, And uh, it's still a... Uh, yeah, so... Um, one day, maybe out of structural steel, I'll get there. The, um, <laughs> but there's some beautiful homes along there. And, uh, yeah, so then um, uh, got the size of the crews up and um, pumping along nicely. Um, but then that was good. Um, and it's always one of those things that is what it is until it's not. Um, and, you know, the leading hands wanted to go on their own, mm-hmm. which is fair enough. They were already running a crew for me. Mm. Um, I still talked to them a fair bit, and they were good lads. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they, um, and then I jumped back on the tools. I'm like, you know what? I've had my little bit of time away, just running books and whatnot. Started like three other businesses, worked out the ones I didn't like doing. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, um, went back to framing and I realized I enjoyed that. I still enjoyed it. Um, and so I stuck that up for another three or four years. So I think I got up to like 18 years, mm-hmm. pretty sure it was 18 years in total. Yep. Maybe touched on 19, but. Um, but uh, which was good, and I really, I really like framing. Um, still do. Um, won't go back. But um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Um, I certainly have. And what's a, the most amount of guys you had at one point? I think it was with ten. Warner. It was Warner Con- Yeah, Warner Construction. Yeah. Um, so and that's like about, two crews. Yeah, two crews. Um, uh, I've had a lot of friends who have had like nine or ten in one crew. Yeah. Um, and. That has its advantages, has its disadvantages. Um, it's just a, the way you organise it. Mm. Um, it just changes because um, the business has to run a different way. Yeah. And um, were you on site much? No, I normally just, 10, I just I no, I just drove around and I checked off all the jobs. Had yeah. this checklist process um, that I'd go through, check it off, get mm-hmm. it, um, and just you know write up a report if things need to go back to. Um, and then just try and do that before they came and say put the windows back in because they had to make a return trip. Mm. So I tried to just make sure I was in that window there. And then they'd come back and just tidy up a couple of things. So how, how quick could you, just out of curiosity, how quick could you punch out 
say, you know, just a normal volume builder size, 250 square metre house? Oh, 250 with... What two... is an average size house, if you're going to say... Oh, I reckon the moment... Average four-bedroom house. I reckon it's something... It's, it's, it's got a two in it. Yeah. Low twos. All right, so... Um, you... But it depends if you can clean the garage. Yeah, okay. So, like, living area. If you can clean... It's normally got a double garage. So, three or four-bedroom, double garage, common. Two seven ceilings. Yeah. Um, what do you punch out? How, how long would you punch that out in? That out in? Oh, we could do that in a day with, you know, five or six of us. Yeah. Um, Actually, you know what? I'll tell you, this just came to me. Is You got out the construction game at a pretty good time, I'd imagine, with the shortages and stuff. like. No, it was horrible. When you were st- there, it was still horrible? I literally quit. I had one pay, like, basic pay bracket for, like, 13 years of my company. Yeah. And the next day after I resigned, I closed up. The rates went up. Oh, Literally really? the next day. They rang me and said, Matty, come back. We'll put the rates up. I said, no, nah, I'm done. I was more thinking going down the line of like, it's uh, when you said you could build them in a day. And yep. I'm thinking like COVID, because you were out of Warner when COVID was happening? No, no. I, I stuck it out for like a year. Oh, okay. Year and a bit. What, was that when there was the starting to get... Like, what about were you, did you operate during that timber shortage? Yeah. Because yeah. I was thinking like, was that really slowing up the builds? Were you having to go back... You know, because uh, they had, like, the trust issue and the, all that, did It was they? a all bit the... of a juggle on a couple of my homes. It was mostly the, mainly the LVL beams. That... LVLs, I knew it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, and the glue laminates, the ones that were stuck on ships floating out of the middle of nowhere. Yeah. The, um, but uh, there was just a, because no one wanted to buy anything out of China. Mm. Um, so then they, yeah, so then Eastern States started buying, buying up Eastern States. But yeah. that was also when it was a perfect storm because... You had the COVID, you had COVID. Eastern states bought from the mills. One of the mills caught on fire in Melbourne yeah. in the fires that we had the, six months before. I remember that. The um, so you know, and then, then that's a stack right there. Yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a juggle there. Um, so yeah, there was more of it. If you take one of those situations out, it probably wouldn't have been so bad. Yeah. On the timber front, but you know, it is what it was. Is um, there true that a lot of people then? start a building steel frame like builders that only usually would build timber well I, f- I feel like there's a they definitely i feel like they definitely do a lot more lightweight steel now yeah but that is what it is now i don't know how long see i'm a i'm a first fixer mm-hmm. so like i really and i know i've spoken to a number of builders and they would have jumped over to some lightweight steel and that's a fair enough call because they can't get carpenters yeah so so, di- so yeah so from I'm an amateur at this. So you're a steel fixer or you're a carpenter. Like carpenters don't go over to... It's technically carpentry, which makes no sense to me. Mm. But at the same time, you're framing and like you get it. You get it, same product. Yeah. At the end of the day. Well, it is different, but it's the same. If if you need to get your house built because you need somewhere to live and you need it faster, there's a good consideration to go to steel frame. Yeah. Like, and so could you knock up a steel frame or is it like totally different skill set, totally different tools? It, I feel like it is a, I would be able to do it. I can do it. I'm qualified to do it. Yeah. However, I haven't done it, mm-hmm. but a lot of the fundamentals are the same. Like wall frame goes here, screw it together, fix it to the ground. Yeah. Make sure it's plumb level straight. Yeah. Um, and then the roofing system, because, um, a lot of roofs are full truss roofs or the um, half truss roofs. Um, putting it together is a lot of the same theory. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just following a plan, following a, following a set of details, um, screw it together. So guys who do steel fix every day, are they carpenters or are they yeah, they're, they're a are, steel fixer or something? No, they're carpenters. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I get, get, well, see, carpentry is very broad. Mm. So... This is what I say to people who come to me and they're not, like when I had apprentices come through, um, it's the same as, for example, you. You've got maintenance plumbers, you've got leak detection plumbers, you've got first fix, like new yeah. home plumbers. Yeah. Um, and so you're either a first fixer, you're a second fixer, you do cladding, you do kitchens, but mm-hmm. you're all carpenters. Um, I wouldn't get a framer to install a kitchen. Shit, I don't even install my own kitchen. The, yeah, um, I know I don't, what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. My saws are blunter. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's not. I'm not. Yeah, that's very precision. You kind of want to put it through like a mm-hmm. bandsaw and whatnot. And just yeah. Send yeah, it through. yeah. I know exactly. What you the mean. um. So, 
but yeah, it gets very specific in your trades. Like I didn't even enjoy putting up cladding. I did it once, basically lost all my money on the job. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not good at this. I don't enjoy it. I'm not doing when it. When you say, what are you talking about? Like external, like villa board yeah. and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I like had slats a, and all that. Yeah, I had a builder um, try to get me over to do the framing on houses. He goes, oh, no, it's really good because you get to do the cladding as well. I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming. A lot, but, of, a lot of carpenters I've noticed have gone into roofing. They're starting to go into roofing. Even though they're not roof plumbers, but there's, more, there's just more money in it. So they're like roofing companies, big construction level roofing companies yeah. doing like tier one and tier two. Yeah. and few, They're all hiring um, carpenters now to put yeah. the roofs on. Well, it's interesting because it's, it's, if you can do the job and it's a better pay bracket, mm. then yeah, hell, I'll, probably, I'll probably pay a carpenter more than I can get framing to swing steel beams in. Mm. Yeah. And if there's any um, roofers or if there's any uh, carpenters who want to come across and swing <laughs> beams in... The, uh, and to be honest, it's a lot easier. So, well, I'm glad you brought up beams because that's what I wanted to get to next. So, but quickly, so what was the catalyst for you to shut down Warner then? Warner uh, Constructions, you know, what, what was the pure, environment that was happening? Uh, it was just, uh, the steel was going well um, and I enjoyed it um, and I lost a fair bit of passion for framing. I, I didn't want to get to 20 years and I was on that 18, 19 year mark. Mm. And I was like, yeah, enough's enough. So you're saying you were doing built while you're doing Warner? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah, see. so they were both running at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was just a, it was just a call, and I said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather focus on one um, because, like, I know people have got four or five different businesses. Like, yeah. Only one makes money. They, the other four are just more of a burden. Yeah. I like, just do one really well. Yeah, I think the same thing. So and, many people we both know these types yeah. of people that they try and do eight different things yeah, and you, they never end up doing one of them very well. No, nah, you know, two spread out. Every single person I know who's killing it yeah. is doing one thing and just is the best or is just dominating that yeah. one thing. Yeah, and then, you know, if you get it to a stage and it takes like four, five, six, seven years, I yeah. reckon, to really, for most people, unless you're actually like a supreme operator who's done this for years, but like to get a business running up that runs very well without you um and then you have you can wholeheartedly focus on building another business yeah but that's that's a that's most of the time it's a five six seven eight year goal oh yeah and then but then there's a variable that happens in eight years that the economist didn't pick yeah the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the um but you know it's no one really knows yeah and like you know earrings it is what it is till it isn't mm-hmm. so yeah it's it's good now until it's not mm. So tell um, us about Built now then. Um, no, Built's, uh, I uh, really enjoy Built. Built's a good company. What's the um, company, you know, what do you do? Who do you work for? Not um, specific builders, but what sort of, you're um, in the residential? Yeah, so we do a lot of residential. Um, we get a lot of beams out a day. Um, well, How many uh, are you talking? You go by beam per day. Is uh, that like your... It's just a quick metric. I look okay. at my head. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's a very fast and loose metric. Um, we're doing, you know, we can get into 10 beams a day. I think we've got 11 or 12 went in yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, for the from where we've gone to to where we are now, um, that's uh, pretty good, but we are trying to um, do better there. Um, How many staff have you got? Uh, there's like 15 or 16 of us, yep. something like that, mm-hmm. um, and different aspects of the business. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so we've got, but we do we do also do some um, commercial and lightweight, uh, light commercial jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, we've looked at some industrial type work as well. Um, but uh, bread and butter has been um, residential based off um, my framing career mm-hmm. um, because there's not a lot of tolerance. Um, so wherever brackets sit, wherever columns sit, you know, it's a 90 mil wall with a 90 mil column. Yeah. You know, that's got to go where it's got, needs to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I feel like we do that really well, um, and but we're always trying to uh, refine, um, communicate better, and we're always trying to process it better, um, and uh, yeah. Um, I was going to say, have I don't know if I just wasn't aware back when I was doing like a lot of new homes as an apprentice and that, but have all these new homes, new builds, always had a lot of structural steel, or is it? 
because um, I can't always remember there always being this these structural steel elements. I feel like that might have came in more in the last ten or twenty years, or it, am I wrong? No, they've always been there um, to some regard, um, but they are uh, they've definitely ramped up in the last couple of years. Um, and is that like a design to do with the designs they're doing now? Yeah, they well, require it's, more. Or? Yeah, well, it all, it's also to do with um, like we do a lot more townhouses now. Mm. Um, and if you think about it, you've got a six metre wide house with no internal walls. There's mm. nothing to stop, you know, falling over. Yeah. So the steel is actually a bracing component as well. Yeah. Um, and so they have to get factored in um, into the houses sometimes, um, a lot of the times. Um, but also, you know, councils wanting, um, uh, you don't want just big box homes sometimes in certain areas. Mm. Um, so the, the beams will come, the upstairs walls will sit in from external wall lines. Um, so that means that uh, something's got to carry upstairs wall load. Mm. So it depends on what, how the um, building is designed. Um, and people want, you know, open plan living. Yeah. They want yeah. different things now. So a lot of it's to do with like spans, hey? Like, yeah, 100%. Could you swap out structural steel with LVL? Are they like oh, uh, two sort of yeah. doing the same things or is there times where like you could only use structural steel? Depends on if there's a bracing component normally. Um, but you, you can, but you might be putting, say, two massive timber beams in for the trade-off of one mm. steel beam. Okay. So, uh, and it all comes down to also, like, floor cavity sizes. Can you fit it? Because you need a bigger, uh, yeah. you need a bigger timber beam versus a smaller steel beam. Yep, yep. So there's a lot of factors that come in. Mm-hmm. Um, depends on, yeah, what you want it to look like, where you yeah. want it to be. Um, a lot of times it's easier to get a steel beam put in, done, carpental frame into it. Yeah. Off you go. And are you essentially getting, like just plans from the builder and you're just literally fabricating these beams up to the exact specs or are you going to site measuring and doing site measures or something or is it all off plans depends on the style of home and who the builder is um but uh most of it is basically off plan um because it is it's super annoying and especially from a framer as well if you need to adjust room sizes mm. on the fly mm. because a lot of times if you change something oh, downstairs that's... what did you do upstairs what moved that's so what then rec- you got to remember what you did yeah so to adjust for a slab being like 20 mil over you wouldn't do it if, especially as a brick you just move the whole house maybe 10 mil that yeah. way yeah and you know n- no one ever would that's how that's why i reckon you got a good advantage is that you you, you can see things from the framing point of view yeah. as well Oh, like, you know, so you've got that like yeah. relationship between how the actual just that first fix comes together. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, it's been one of our largest selling points. Um, Is it? That it's just like, no, we'll just, they don't have to, we don't get them to come chalk a job out for us. Like, because there are some fabricators that need the carpenter come out and put chalk lines down. Like, yeah. No, no, you just give us a slab, we'll sort it out. Oh, really? Like, don't worry about organising someone else. Yeah. Um, we got this. That's a good competitive advantage, isn't it? Yeah. But there are there is definitely a few that still chalk out their own slabs, but yep. at the same time, there's a few that don't. Mm-hmm. And is it a matter of, like, you're, what you're getting just massive, all different types of steel beams delivered to the workshop? Yep. And then what are you welding plates on at different points or drilling yep. holes at certain points? And Yeah, so we have it all drawn up. So um, we'll take the engineering and like their section details um, from the engineer if they need something very specific. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we will factor that into our shop drawings um, and then make it work inside the home. Um, and then if there's any queries, um, like bringing the builder going, what is it you're actually trying to achieve here? Can I stick this beam out through here mm-hmm. um, to solve this problem? Because this doesn't work in this situation. Like, mm-hmm. The engineers are pretty close, but a lot of the times there's little, like, well, that doesn't work because of this. What can we do yep. to change it? Can we do this, this, and this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so there's a, we've got a big job in Medindi at the moment, and we, um, uh, as a perfect example, I'm like, well, this column location doesn't actually work here because there's a canopy, roof canopy. It's just going to be a random column coming up through the gap. Yeah. So, like, we need to bring it out here, put an hour rigger on it. So I send, I just did all the shop drawings and um, sent it off because it's easy for us to just quickly draw it up and because we have a reasonable understanding of what needs to be achieved. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you go, okay, we'll just draw it up. I'll send it to the engineer. I'm like, you're good with this. He's like, yep, no worries. 
Yeah, that's um, sick. And then I just CC the builder in mm-hmm. and just go, yep, yeah, um, this is what I think needs to happen. Um, we think this is going to work. This mm-hmm. will solve everyone's problems. Engineer's happy. Cool, sweet. Put it up. Can I ask you how you... I don't know how it works with charges. Is it like per lineal meter or how uh, does it... Well, is it weight or something? Or? Yeah, a lot of the time it's weight because still sold to us in weight. Yeah. Um, but there's a number of other factors yeah, that come into I imagine. it. Yeah, um, Yeah, this product and that product and it needs this type of fixings. It needs... Mm-hmm. Um, we normally upgrade all of our fixings. Um, sometimes it's like 12 mil pins or 16 mil bolts. We'll just... A lot of times we just put 16 mil pins in and with um, 20 mil bolts because you know by the time you're like oh this column has got 16 that one's got 20s and then yeah. you run around and got what bolts have I got in my bag and yeah. rah, rah, just like no nah, just put them just fill the lads yeah, with the pouch yeah. up with this, yeah. with all the same bolts the same stuff. it off yeah unless then sometimes you get bigger ones but you know yeah. a lot of residential is normally like 16 or 20 mil bolts in your game have you had many like supplies constraints you've had to work with or anything like that with the steel yeah, well, it got a little uh, funny in the middle there um, in the last year, but it's, it's, it's balanced itself out a little bit. Um, but it's just being more organised, um, just making sure you're okay. Well, um, talking to your suppliers, and all, they might go, Yeah, well, we don't have this beam coming in at that length for, you know, mm. a month. Mm-hmm. You're like, All right, cool. You either ring another supplier, or you just go, Okay, well, if I get that one, I need that one at this job here down the track. Yeah. Or sometimes I just like, what do you got on your shelf? I'm like we got these. I'm like, cool, just give them to me. Yeah. And I'll just store them. Could Could you ever make? This is probably a really amateur question. Come from a plumber. If a beam has got to be nine nine meters long, mm. you can't get two four and a half meter beams and weld them together to make one yeah. beam. Or <laughs> you don't. You, <laughs> but, you uh, could. You could. <laughs> you can do structural welds and structural. Okay, but that's, but that's another engineer. Yeah. Coming in. Because when you just mentioned like the length of the beam, yeah. I started thinking like, oh, that's what, probably that's, if you need well, a nine meter beam, that. you need yeah. a nine meter piece of beam to I, make that. Ideally, unless there's a um, strengthening component in the middle, because um, obviously a nine meter beam is going to flex, yeah. so you can do structural joins and you can do structural connections in the middle. Okay, but the, that's a different conversation. Yeah, and you just avoid it yep. if you can. If you can produce exactly what the engineer is after. Mm-hmm. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. But if you got that's desperate, good, I don't. I just, that's good yeah. advice. Yeah. Um, have you? What? No, I'm gonna, I was going to ask something different, but I want to ask you. You got a business partner this time around. Yep. I've so, had business partners before. Okay, in one yep. of those other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, but I mean, this one has gone bigger than. Yeah. Any other business? So how does how is that different? Like, is it? It's, it's Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How's that dynamic different, I suppose, and the thinking process between, like, you know, when you're at Warner and you can just make any decision you want, whatever. But now you've got to. How um, do you guys work together? Um, we both play a role. Mm-hmm. Um, we're pretty clear on what we do, um, and I uh, I'm a lot better at working with a business partner than I was, you know, the first time around. Yeah. Um, and that understanding, but it also keeps me, like, keeps me in check. I don't know, he keeps himself in check, you know? It's mm-hmm. like when you're on your own, sometimes you're like, well, we're doing this. Yeah. And then there's may or may not be someone who's of good value in your ear going, hey, Matt, I don't think that's a good idea. Or, hey, have you thought about this? Mm. And you go, okay, no, that's a really good point. Um, but it's also good because sometimes I get stewed up in my head and I'm like, I think this is the best decision. Oh, you know what? I should go ask Ben. Yeah. And then Ben, I'm like, yeah, he'll give me his opinion. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good opinion. Yeah. Right, we'll go do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm like, if we add that into this part and this part would then like help this part. Yeah. You know, sweet. Yeah. You know, the access is a good outcome. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just, it comes down to communication. Like, you How know, about when you, sorry. Yeah. How about when you totally you think one thing he thinks the other does that ever ha- happen and you just like you both going in totally different directions and you need how do you mediate that when there's two we people we haven't really had to mediate anything um but there's definitely times where it's there's there's definitely times where you know you kind of sometimes you just have to sit back and go 
what is the best outcome for the company because mm-hmm. the company's got to come first yeah yeah you know, it, it's it's got true the um and especially in the like how fast we're growing and the like where the company's going and all this type of stuff um it's the company's got to come first and then you really have to sometimes you just have to sit there and take the opinion on board and then you go okay well yeah that's that is it's got some very good valid arguments like i don't think that's valid but i think that's valid and that happens all the time Mm -hmm. um and Mm -hmm. that's me sending things back to ben you know you just go well i kind of but it's understanding who's the key decision maker in that in that role very specific yeah Outcome because you both got different to... skill sets, I suppose. Yeah, don't absolutely. You? We've, yeah. we've definitely come in. Would I be different. right in saying that if if you, if there was a decision to be made about fabricating a beam, it would probably be Ben because he he is the fabricator uh, of the. Yeah. Absolutely. I I I will give him my opinion if I have if I believe it's something to do with the way <laughs> that house needs to be built. Yep. And then I will go. This is what these are probably these are the factors you're going to have to think about. Mm-hmm. your call mm-hmm. and I'll just walk away mm-hmm. the, uh, and just realize and I had you know you had to get used to going that's not my decision mm-hmm. um, I respect his decision he's, he's right most of the time like I, I, off the top of my head I can't think of the time where he, he probably wasn't he didn't do a good decision yeah it, like but sometimes you just got to make a decision yeah right or wrong it doesn't matter is that's that the it. best decision you made at that point in time yeah yeah cool that makes sense I see how you got to that yeah cool. 100% and like 90% of it might have been right. And I do this shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, and it comes back at me when he's asking me the same questions. Or I'll ring up Ben, like if, if I'm not with him or anything. But I'll just go, like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And he's just like, yeah, well, probably consider this, this, and this. All right, sweet. I've got the information I need yeah. to be, to work down the line. Definitely. Um, so, like, I come in, I do, mo- I've done most of the design. So I'm, um, Ben does a bit more design stuff now. Um, but uh, I sign off on most jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, we have someone who does it now, but I come in for the complicated ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'll just come in and go, yep, that's going to work. Or I don't know how that connection's really going to work there, but I need that beam there and that beam there. Mm-hmm. So um, Ben, your structural you know, yeah. background, yeah. where is that going to connect and how, how can we achieve this? Cool. Do it like this. He might run through the shop drawings and I might send it off or something. Yeah. Like that. Just get proof. But it's it's working together and, and knowing each other's strengths um, and then doing that mm-hmm. and then just backing them in. Yeah. Because you've got to have a partnership with them. Definitely. You know I mean, they've got a good opinion. You know, what are you going to do? Mm. It's like that. Have you read, like, you know, Ray Dalio? Have you read the, his book? No, oh, I haven't read his book. It's called, the, yeah. um, it's got an audio. I'll listen to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, and he talks about, like, that idea of merit, meritocracy where it's like everyone has you listen to everyone's opinion equally but then depending on what the the decision is being made on the person who has the most experience or qualification has the most like weighted opinion if you know what i mean so like it's a bit like that i it's, suppose yeah i know I, I that's pretty close to what i've grown up with um, i didn't know that was him but it was i i listen to a lot of people's opinions you know like i yeah i used to always have the biggest opinion in the room but now I'm, I'm much more reserved um, mm-hmm. in a lot of surroundings um, where I actually, I actually really enjoy getting people's opinions. A lot of time I don't think they're right or I don't think they're wrong. Yeah. I think they have good... It's just like gathering information. Going, that like can... that one piece of information there, that 5% of that whole conversation, that small piece of information is very valid. Mm-hmm. And I should take that into consideration, like just yeah. get rid of the rest. Yeah. The, um, but it's who you're getting the information from. Yeah. But like who you're asking the question That's to. That's right. You've got to ask the right question like, to the right person. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to, it's <laughs> when you the, the most expensive advice is free advice from a poor person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, like you're not going to ask your accountant how to put up a ball frame, nor, nor no. would you ask a, you for accounting advice yeah. type thing. It's, yeah. 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 I can, I can give you, you some. You give some. I know you definitely advice, would give some. But <laughs> accurate? Yeah. You're never sure of giving out advice. The, um, whether it's right or wrong. Whether it's right or wrong. That's your opinion. <laughs> yeah. The, um, but that was, the, that was the best advice I could have given at that point in time in my life. The, um, with my eight, zero qualifications. <laughs> yeah, we're about eight whiskeys deep. <laughs> oh, oh, I know everything. You know nothing. <laughs> and when, we, when you were just answering 
I don't know what made me think of this, but I the I can see like a stark difference with the two businesses is the fact that like now, you know, you were just like before. I don't, I know you've had other businesses, but we'll talk about Warner because yeah. they're sort of like yeah, they're the only two worth talking about. Yeah, yeah. Warner Construction is like you you rock up to site, materials are there, you build it. Yeah. Now you've got a different style of business where you're actually running a factory yeah. and you're like cr- pr- providing a product, building a product and then installing it as well. Yeah. Like how, I know we've had some pretty interesting chats around like how you've had to have this whole different mindset now of like trying to make a factory efficient, like, yeah. oh, this bench should go there instead of yeah. being all the way over there for no reason. Yeah. How's like, that been? Because like, that's know, been interesting to talk about. Yeah, so productivity, um, you know, people can get caught simple as footstep cost dollars. Yeah. The, um, but it was really interesting. I uh, came across from talking to a uh, builder and we're talking about uh, the Toyota 8 waste, um, lean yeah. manufacturing, tin wood and all that type of stuff. Um, and it got me, it really got my brain ticking over and going, well, yeah, because we are manufacturing, obviously now. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, where are the efficiencies and you stand back and looking like i look at like there's one bloke that's down the end of the warehouse and i watched him you know walk right down the other end of the warehouse to like grab something incidental then walk all the way back i'm like yeah that's a problem <laughs> it cost me more to get him to walk over there than the thing over there was worth <laughs> i'm just yeah. like how do i and yeah but it's a um and then reacting upon that and you have to react quick because he's if you don't react quick he's on it 10 more times yeah it just cost me like a hundred bucks for him to just walk up and down the floor <laughs> could you tell me sometimes you just looked at it and just got the forklift and been like i'm just gonna pick this bench up with the forklift and put it there it why there. is it not there now yeah, just like it was still thing like the one was the scrap bin was way down like just outside yeah i'm like there's a whole fucking bit in the middle here. Yeah. So I'm like... So now it's what is in the middle, central. Bang and just in the go, middle of everyone. Oh. Yeah. 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 And just flick it in. Yeah. Because I'm going to flick it from the bench. And when you do that shit, you think to yourself, why didn't I not think of that like about six months ago? Hey? No, I didn't run it that long. But um, <laughs> but I mean, uh, I do that stuff no, here and oh, I'm like, that's... No, but why didn't I just there do are, three There ago? are a bunch of things. No, but there was things in carpentry that I'd been doing for 13 years and then it's just like, Oh, that's just stupid. Yeah. But it was a lot of the time it was the way you were taught. Yeah. So I and I've learned this. So most of my people through uh, team through Warner came up through me. So they come up through a first year, second year, third year, and then to um to more of a management team leader. Mm-hmm. Role. Um whereas at built we've brought people in from other places. So they've come from other companies and they've come from other managers. Yeah. So I look at them and go, why do you manage a team like that? Or why haven't you, like, that's a problem. Why haven't you fixed it? Because mm. I'm like, we'll do it now. Let's fix it now. The, um, but why, so then you go, okay, well, who taught you that? Because that's, and then you've got to understand that they've learned management from somebody. Yeah. They may not have known that they were learning management, but they were learning management yeah. from someone. And then they've, like, my, like, I was very angry boss employer at carpentry when i was younger i'm like i was just like yelling just like getting people to run and like real angry then i'm like this is just stupid how about i just communicate yeah, yeah. let's try and communicate let's try that yeah like is, is just <laughs> guessing getting, it works better there's just someone getting yelled at and i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> they just run faster in a direction they don't know where they're going <laughs> yeah but, you know and then i realized you know i was the management that i learned wasn't great yeah so then I worked on that and, um, and then, yeah, so then you go, okay, well, like when we go to them, like, why haven't you fixed this or why are you allowing this to happen? You go, well, hey, why haven't I mm. like, obviously you've, you've learned that from somebody mm. now I've just got to talk to them and go, well, why do you think that's not a good response or why do you think we could like, how could we do better here? Yeah. Or what is, what's like because if you're doing that it's a problem over here so how is that going to affect down here and a lot of times they don't answer their own question yeah and you go okay well what's that going to affect down the line yeah and they're just like oh, i'll probably affect this and this cool stop it now mm-hmm. and um one of the things um that i really um have uh, tried to really implement into the business is that if there's a and it, it is toyota and like i don't know if this is 100 percent correct but 
anyone at any point in the in the line can stop the conveyor line of cars going out the door. Anyone can hit the button and stop. Mm-hmm. He goes because if there's a if there's a problem, you fix it now, and you don't let it drag out. Yeah. We don't deliver that product, so it's a very much a no stop. You fix it now. Oh Matt, this cleats fucking yeah. a little bit wonky. Cut it off. Fucking do it again. Yeah. Like or like, how can we fix this? Don't mm. deliver that. Mm. Um, so it's and then then it stops defects mm. down the line, which is the uh, D in Tim Wood. The um, so you then you're stopping problems that you have to go back for when you could have just fixed it now. It cost you five minutes, but the client's happy. The mm. the products stands up and it's good. When you say tin tin wood, tin wood. So what is that? that? Um, I can Sim- now works. work with me. So, <laughs> so All right. um, yeah. So T, T is for <laughs> Tom. come back to it. <laughs> no. I'm interested to know. Yeah, what yeah. It is. So um, uh, time, inventory, um, motion, uh, waste, um, off, uh, overproduction, um, uh, waste. There's an O in there. There's another O, is there? Yeah. So there's two O's in a row. Overproduction. And. And then the last oh, one no, is like over defects. Yeah, is yeah. So you're just um, missing one, one O. There. You'll think of it. I'll think of that in a sec. The um. See, I reckon you got really woke when you like. You, we spoke about it before when you watched that video. That seems like a lot of light bulbs went off. Because it yeah. was it a video you watched or something uh, originally about the t- the tin tin wood. Thing? Yeah, it was a video actually. Yeah. Um, and then I've it's funny I've spoken to and it's it's come up in a couple of resumes lately. Um, understanding someone's put in for a job and they're like understanding lean manufacturing principles. Mm. I'm like, oh, 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 hello, hello. What does that mean? <laughs> Hiya. The, I'm like, yeah. What do you think that means? <laughs> yeah. And then like, they give it a response. You're like, oh, that's not uh, what it I means. Just put it on there. Yeah. 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 yeah I just put it on there. The sound of fight. Yeah. The um so. Yeah, um, but uh, it's really understanding the industry because, like, at the start uh, for the first, like, say, six months or something, I was like, yeah, cool, it's, it's basically the same as carpentry. Mm. But, you know, it's not. It's, you- it's com- yeah, completely different. And then respecting that and moving forward and go, okay, well, what is my what is the company trying to achieve? Mm. What is it we want to achieve? Have you ever had anyone come into your business like I, I have? And it's the, it is probably one of the best things when you hire someone <clears throat> and they just come in and they're just like, you just do this in the stupidest way, do this, and you're just like, wow, that seems a lot better, and you do it. Has that ever happened I, to you? Because that is awesome. I, um, yes, it, it, it's, it's basically, it <laughs> it's has the best happened, thing. and I was trying to think what actually happened. But, um, you know, when you know, it seems so no. obvious, and you're like, yeah, I always thought that wasn't the right thing to do, but yeah. I've just done it forever. The, uh, no, it was with my drafting at the start. And then... And what was it? What happened? Oh, the just drafting was... It was good. Um, but it, it got... It got us to a point. And then, like, just the flow throughout the warehouse after that with a different set of drawings, the way it was laid out. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, yeah, that's heaps more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the best and, like, things. Just, yeah, because I'm not explaining. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, you put it there because of this. Yeah. And you're like, just put it there. Yeah. Like, you know, follow the picture. I'm hoping... Because like, we're trying... I'm trying to hire an accountant uh like an accounts person like a manager accounts manager that's the next person internal sort of person we're going to try and hire yeah and i'm just like i know there's going to be so many moments where they're going to be like what you do is r- yeah. is the stupidest thing i've ever seen yeah why don't you just do this and i'm just like i can't wait for that yeah moment to happen oh we just had our own accounts fixed did you? Yeah, because I did them. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm worried about and, uh, too. I mean, like. They just backed it. They just like re-reconciled everything. Yeah. And just put everything right. It was all right. It was just located wrong. Yeah. So like it was, but I'm like, yeah, cool. Well, that was good. It got us, you know, so far. And then like, okay, that's... well, how are we getting clean data? Yep. And that's where it's just like, yeah, well, that gives us the answer. Mm-hmm. But how do we get really clean, precise data? That's one of the things in business, hey, is like, no one teaches you all this stuff you need to know hey like you're a yeah. chippy and i'm a plumber and suddenly you've got 20 people working for you whatever or even as you're growing up to that and you're like you just expected to know all this thing all these things and yeah. teach yourself how to do reconciling and then yeah and you just like that's that's one of the hardest things about business i reckon is you yeah. just so many things you need to be over at the start especially when you can't have the right you don't mm-hmm. have the 
ability, the money or the resources to hire someone to do it for you, you know, you just have to somehow know a little bit about everything and yeah, it's really, piece together. You know, the um, it's it you do get better at asking the right questions mm. um, and just. I was talking about when I was like 17, 18, 19 or something like that. And my um, dad, no, I would have had to have been 18 or 19. And um, dad gave me my ob for a birthday or a Christmas present. And then about a month wow. later, he took it off me because yeah. when I hadn't opened it. Um, but he took it off me and said, get an accountant. Yeah. He's like, don't do this yourself. I think he's seen my school grades uh. and just said, no, nah, you're not the guy for this job. And, um, but you know, I was super young. <laughs> the, um, and so it's kind of like, um, yeah, you get, you get the right people and do the right job. Mm, mm. You get, you need a tax lawyer, get a good, go get a good tax lawyer and, and ask can, them the question. It's, it's so and much then about, they're going to tell you the answer. Yeah. It's so much about who, you, when you were yeah. saying that, I was just thinking it's so much about who you know as well. Like when you start hanging around the right people that can give you the right information and but the problem you know, is when you're growing up in that stage you're hanging around the people growing up in that stage yeah so yeah. you're all that's probably where i meant by that yeah, actually yeah you're all a little bit lost so it's trying you're all to like, get to the hey, what did you do in this position yeah and until you get to someone like oh yeah you actually have done well mm. and you've answered these questions because you're like this is a like reconciling something for the first time you're like oh i suppose this is right mm. when you you know straight into business and then like you're trying to work it out and then you go to like an accountant or a bookkeeper or someone good in that area and they've just gone yeah click 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 it done what's yeah. the next question yeah uh, oh is oh, that, no, that that's easy the best. Yeah. yeah so but you want to you want to surround yourself with those people yeah and you have to that's like it. if you want to actually see like warner was just a job we're built to business mm-hmm. mm. so yeah, we, that's yeah 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 and that's understanding like you know how long is it going to run without you opening up the doors and that's that's what that's such a misconception people have i reckon i say it to some of my mates who are um you know just subbies or whatever for in whatever their trade is you know and they have like three guys but they have to be at work every single day otherwise everything breaks and i'm I'm, I'm not there either yet believe me but oh yeah you realize like you know and they're talking about how i've got a business you're like and I've, we've spoke about this before. Yeah, you you just spe- like, it's you- not really a business. It's actually just an expensive job that you've yeah. given yourself. Well, businesses are great for the government because most of them work for the minimum wage. Yeah, that's what like they, you they, work it they, out. Yeah, but the um, but that is but a misconception, this, man. That yeah, people but have. this is also you know they do it because they enjoy it. You mm. know, we do heaps of shit in this world for free. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, either, no, because there's you know? that value exchange of I get enjoyment out of it. Yeah, or I have to do this. Like I tell people all the time, like, I want to run a business. Do you absolutely have to run a business in life to be happy? No, fuck that. Don't do it. It's mm. a nightmare. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I do it because I have to. And I love it. Mm. It's what I do. Yeah, same. The, um, and, you know, you put in the long hours, you, you do it because, you know, you want to, you enjoy seeing the process unfold. Yeah. And um, you like all the moving parts. You got to be a bit, yeah, you just got to be a bit built for it, eh? I, oh, I get absolutely. people coming to me all the time all the time man saying like look i'm thinking about starting a business but i'm not sure i said that that's it yeah, don't stop already right there i can tell yeah, you shouldn't you can do make it. more money doing yeah like- it's either like you live for it and you just live and breathe it and you love it mm. or don't do it at all mm. because it's going to be a burden man mm. it's going to be like you know like there's misconceptions all the time with the saying oh, i want to have spend to- more time with my kids and i want to have more I money but i want to have a business freedom? yeah it's like, <laughs> That shit don't make sense, man. man. You know how many times, like, I live in, I have a six-month-old daughter, and sometimes I go two or three days without seeing her. Yeah. And she's in the same house. Yeah. I go home at night. Because you miss the... The window. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's... That's tough, though. Like, yeah, like, there's a bit of a burden that I have to absorb. But, you know, this is why I take... Um, I booked off a couple weeks, and like, I put my leave notice in, mm-hmm. and um, I said, what are you doing? I'm like, family time. You signed by the managing director? Yep, I'll sign yeah, no, my I own. Signed, no, 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 I sent it to... Were you worried it wouldn't get approved? <laughs> no, Tara sent me back a nice email saying it got approved. The, um, <laughs> got to follow the protocols. But no, no, like we have four weeks a year. Mm. So me and Ben both have four weeks a year. Mm-hmm. Like there's no exceptions. See, that's more business level way when, you, yeah, when so. you're like, oh, I'm a... Do you, do you more look at yourself like I do this now? Try to look at myself as I'm, I'm an employee of the business. I happen to own the business. But I'm, 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 I work for the business. Yeah, 100%. You're still a cog in the wheel. Yeah. Like, if you're not there, what position is now? Yeah. We just did our org chart and the like, communication mm-hmm. and line of communication. Oh, okay. And 
where like who they report to yeah, and everything and we're starting to roll that out now just to get really clear on that mm-hmm. like because it was like oh well so and so said this so and so said did, did that like well hang on a second what's exactly this person's role and responsibilities mm-hmm. um, are you going to that person because it got to some points so I was just like they come and ask me a question I might like, get out of my office yeah. I'm like that's not me have you been to this person that person's not there cool have you been to this person no go to them mm-hmm. but then it was me going oh okay well the communication line's not clear Okay, so let's take a step back. Yeah. Why are they making it to me yeah. for that type of question? Sure, I need to answer a lot of questions, but is it that one specific? Mm-hmm. But then I'll say something, and then the person who was actually meant to manage that did something differently because they missed out on that communication line. Yeah. So it's, but then, so it's exactly the same. I'm a cog in the wheel. Like across the whole chart, I'm in like three or four different spots. Mm. Um, so, you know, who's responsible for. Um, process like approving pay slips you know yep. as simple as that yep. who does that if yep. they're not there who does that Who? well who's directly above them has this come from doing that and I won't mention the company name but doing that growth health check because uh, that was an eye opener no that was I did that and I think that was good it was um, really good but I was wondering if this came from that because you know when you get asked those 100 questions and no. uh, there's like 78 no's and 22 yeses yeah, yeah. and you're like and oh I've got work to do yeah but it's also relative to the size of your business yeah like yeah. when you looked at all those questions you're like do I need to do this like do I need this position mm. no I don't even like do I need a full time HR management mm. no like I don't have too many problems yeah and everyone's, pre- everyone's pretty managed pretty well and they're all reasonably happy and whatnot so mm. you know it's well it's, it's good for now mm-hmm. but like we do have someone the hr is in a position but it's not a full-time role it's more like who receives the timesheets um who's who puts in for like approves leave who puts the forms in yeah um you know who do yep. you go to ask a question yep um hey like these are my new super details who do you take that to mm. yeah, yeah man yeah definitely do you have this is this just a like document you give everyone or do you literally have this org chart like somewhere? Oh no, we're putting the org chart on the wall. Oh, yeah? Like we've finished, it fits on an A3 piece of paper. Did you like, make it on like Lucid chart or something Yeah, like I did that? actually. Yeah, how good is that program? Yeah, I know. It I, is I looked at a whole anyone, bunch of other ones. Even I can figure out how to use and, it. Like, so. I was happy enough to pay for the membership. Yeah. I was just That's like, an elite program. I'll just, I'll just pay for this because it was so simple to use. Yeah. Do you know what else is elite? Do you use Canva? Yeah, well I, tr- <sighs> no. That's so elite. I, I, I don't enjoy it. But yeah. I don't enjoy doing those things. Yeah, yeah. But like either, Ke- but... Uh, Tara gave me, um, uh, logged me in into Team Canva or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, she sent me a link to that. And I tried to do that with the chart and it um, didn't work. And then I had to like buy like another <laughs> subscription to do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, I just many... pay the 12 bucks over here. How many subscriptions are there in, so like, in business? Yeah. Eh? I've, like, I was looking at trying to get like have you got, just MailChimp got... today just for something to do like because <laughs> not for something to do but and i'm like that's just another subscription out of my 150 subscriptions man yeah. like it's just yeah, getting out of control now yeah. and you and it's i like you know we look at um our subscription lists and stuff like that and just go what are these are doubled up and what are these yeah I, because they they stack i know up. i know and you're like oh yeah i where's the value exchange yeah. of what is that feel, we have can't someone just provide all the subscription you know someone needs to start a company that then is the one Don't subscription holder <laughs> you pay one subscription yeah. to one and block. they somehow package everyone's subscriptions together yeah. and then they charge you a lesser rate and all you do is have one subscription yeah, what so a good idea 71 bill why shouldn't that why isn't no one doing that yeah, someone should oh, it keeps me up an at night when they do it. i have to you know how sometimes you have to like write notes in your phone because you can't stop thinking about like certain yeah. things sometimes i have to get up and just like have a note section subscriptions because i'm i'm laying up in bed all night thinking like what subscriptions do i have man i got too many subscriptions just gonna sink the company <laughs> oh my god imagine that R- reason that we went to liquidation <laughs> too many five dollar subscriptions <laughs> I didn't realize they were monthly. <laughs> hey, speaking I've of got it. one. I've got one that I got a notification. I'm like, no, we've direct debited your, oh, like Swift form. I think it's Swift form. Swift. They're like, it's like a hundred bucks a year or something. Swift I form. didn't even know I had yeah. it. And then obviously I've gone through my year and then I've sent me like, we've direct debited this from your account for your new subscription. I was like, 
Oh, are you kidding me? I don't even know how to log into this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, right. what is it? Yeah, and you're just like, yeah, I'll get that for the next ten years, like, because yeah. I can't be stuff logging in. Yeah, and I don't even know where it is to log into. And it was the other one was Paramount Plus. Yeah, those I couldn't ones. get rid of that yeah, one. Yeah, big I time. didn't even know how to delete it. Yeah, and then Nat had to get into my phone and then realize it was through my. Yeah, I didn't realize yeah. it was through Google. Oh, and um. Yeah, and that was like nine bucks a month. And I reckon I kept it shy of a year because I didn't know how to delete literally it. literally never like, used it. Oh, I watched it for one program. Oh, I reckon a lot of them prey on that, man. They know that they're going to get you yeah, and they never, yeah, exactly. I stopped lying myself. I ain't going to the gym. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, speaking before about um, uh, how you know, we were talking about you and Ben make, making the decisions and yep. whatever. You put a board in place? Yeah, we do. Mm. Yep. Tell me about that. Uh, it's new. Um, we are getting better at it. Um, I think it's good because I get middle of the month. I really start going, okay, yep. I need these results done before the end of the month. Yeah. You know, to help keep me accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was, um, uh, they're very good operators who we have, um, and, uh, in their own fields. And, um, they um it was really interesting the last one we went through all this stuff and like um i generally um chair the board and i i uh i went through all this stuff and then it got turned to the last like 15 minutes of the two hour meeting Mm. and then it was just like stop you know you your problem you don't need to worry about any of this stuff all that stuff is fine um because you need to focus on this area this area this area that's it it's all we're doing this month and i'm like you know that's a such a good point yeah like it was as simple as that like but for some reason i couldn't see it i was like no we need to do all this stuff no you don't you need to do these two things mm, and it was great. like went through the whole thing that's great that's and powerful. basically waste an hour and 45 yeah but you know it wasn't wasted but I realized course, hi, it was just a yeah, they yeah. will sort themselves out or you know but you know this is the area you need to do this month to have yeah to, it must be such a powerful tool tool to have someone come in who's totally unbiased and it's just listening to your shit and then reading reports i suppose you have to give them reports or something do you yeah yeah we have and they can just make because we we used to have our monthly meetings but then it used to it was a bit um broad so i was like you know we've never really came to a decision Mm. you know it was just like yeah cool we sweet yeah sweet we go about our day and it was a nothing meeting and i I brought it up a couple times i said we don't achieve a result Mm. we're not achieving a result how do we keep ourselves accountable and i spoke to them um, some people I knew and they, were, and they had just coincidentally there's more people actually have boards than I thought um, now once I started looking around um, I spoke to some friends and they're just like oh yeah we've got a board mm. oh okay what do you talk about what do you do I'm still getting a lot better at it I need to get a lot better at it yeah um, but um, yeah but then it's also I was doing a lot of things for this meeting for example the one coming up and trying to get all the things done and then I realised that like Tara was actually doing something um, that she wasn't overly enjoying. She's like, I hate doing this. I'm like, I'm not good at this stuff. Mm. And this is where it comes back to working inside your value system and your mm. those type of things. And I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm like, you're so much better running a Word doc up than me. Yeah. I'm like, hey, put all this to you. Um, this is what I need. I'm going to take this off your plate. You do that. I'm going to take off and do this. But even the exercise of you having, yeah. knowing you have to do all these things, get all this report in place or whatever, before the meeting must be just good in itself because oh, you probably wouldn't do it unless I don't want to look like an idiot you wouldn't do it unless you yeah. had the meeting and then you must have things where you're like oh wow okay I didn't even know that like yeah. or whatever like just the exercise of forcing yourself every month 100% yeah keeps, and, keeps me accountable and how do they sort of keep part of the board is they're, they're keeping you accountable as well aren't they every month on what yeah. you've oh absolutely it's gonna I like anything if if I'm not if I'm wasting people's time you know and mm. I'm not delivering mm yeah, so like, what are we doing here, Matt? Yeah, because even though they get these type of people are getting paid, they're they're busy. They're, like, they're, they're busy not, people. They don't want to. They would no. rather not have the money if they're not getting results. Yeah. Hey. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I've got plenty of things I can do in my life. Mm. So you know, you got to really make sure that um, yeah, we're we're doing what we said we're going to do, mm-hmm. and like this is where the company's going. This is what we want to achieve. Yeah. Well, let's do it. You're either going to do it or you don't. So is part of that? Do you at the start? Do you have to give them? When you first gather these people up and, you know, you, you first meet them. It took a minute. Them, do you have to give them, I bet it did, do you have to give them like this big 
or this briefing so they understand your company and you know they know where you want to get yeah. to you know is oh, that absolutely. all part of it or did yeah, you, well, these people already know that before are no, they well, totally external people or are they um, people you knew uh, one I knew prior um, and one that I met recently mm-hmm. um, and uh, they were good operators it was interesting conversations that I had with them I'm like that's yeah, it was better, well, I already knew that about one of them, but the the new fellow that I met, I was like, that's actually a really good, like, the the general conversation. And it was super helpful and, like, really intuitive and, like, gave solid answers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, hey, look, this is what I'm actually trying to... And coincidentally, I was trying to put together a board. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I said, this is what I'm trying to do. Is this something you're interested in? He said, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, give me some information. So, you know, just brought him in and took a mm. tour and, you know, talk about this is what's happening, this is what we want to be. And, you know, showed him, like, you know, all our, all our you know, showed him some numbers and yep. this is what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, cool. And then, um, yeah. And That's took awesome, a, man. Took a little bit and uh, yeah. we got it underway and um, it's been a bit clunky. It was clunk- very clunky at the start. Yeah, like um, everything, I suppose. Yeah. But um, and then it's just uh, yeah, helping. Uh, I'm just and that's the level I'm trying to play at. Yeah, you know, is that's where I'm. That's we're doing it, but we're like you know, you're forcing yourself to, to level up, aren't you? Yeah, hundred oh, yeah, percent. that's part of it. The um hundred percent and yeah. yeah, forcing that and just literally forcing the issue. Forcing that level up, man. I love that. Yeah. Just quickly on the offshore stuff because we we got offshore stuff as well, and I, you yeah. you've got how many have you got? Four. How's that going? Yeah, they're that good. Aren't they? Do you? How do you run yeah. it? Do you have like a screen in the office where you can all no, we, see them or something? Or uh, no, no, like no, no, no. The I'm I just um, uh, if I need them, I'll actually I'm as simple as call on messenger. Yeah, like we just got we just add them into a messenger group, mm-hmm. click call, mm-hmm. and I'll ring them. I'll put them on video. Sometimes I don't. I don't know what the others do. Um, some people some I think might have a full time screen where they're on it and stuff like that but yeah, but that's that. that I'm there I'm everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. the um, nah I don't need that have um, you done it because it's hard to find these people in uh, Oz that, what was interesting well, it's always that, a mixture that, I suppose yeah, of it was, money and yeah we were we were looking for a specific person and then we couldn't find that specific person and we're like oh well uh, someone said try this and I'm like alright cool we'll try that mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah it worked out and um, we just we have a morning huddle, so everyone knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um, and uh, we all check in. We all start our morning meeting uh, fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, just make sure everyone's on the right track. Um, you need help with anything? Um, yes, no, sweet, cool. Mm-hmm. All right, reach out if you need me. Um, or I'll just I'll like, hey, stay on the line after the meeting. I'm like, hey, these are the things I want to achieve today. Um, I'll I have to achieve today. Yeah. Um, so you got like a group chat going with them on Messenger, is it? Is that yeah, you actually yeah. use Facebook Messenger? Yeah, just Facebook Messenger. It's yeah. Just easy. So many easy tools now to, to yeah. facilitate it, isn't it? Yeah. It's not even hard. Yeah, eight teams. In the morning, we use Teams, or... Microsoft Teams. That's killer. Yeah. I yeah. just never because we when we started same, when we right. started it, it was just like a couple of us. Yeah. You know, could have been like I was in I was here and Ben was there and Tara was there. Yeah. Like yeah. All, quick meeting. Yeah. Now I'm like, now it's like it, it has grown. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, definitely. And like you've got eight, eight screens on your phone. Yeah. And then, um, but. And they look like a little ant. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. And that's good. It, it, it brings, it boosts morale. Like, you mm. know, it's, yeah, it includes everyone and everyone feels, feels alive in the morning. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because they're working on their own. Yeah. So like I'm out talking to people. Yeah, mm. so yeah, hey, I think yeah, I need to be done. better at that. And um, and they, I, they, I think they really enjoy it. and They feel included. Mm. Um, they see things. You know, there's like you could have messenger chat groups just for fun, and you know, just like I tell the install boys, like, make sure you post photos in the in the chat group. You know, because yeah. you know everyone wants to see them going up. Yeah, that's I need to be better like, at we that. We do man. some cool houses. Yeah, and you're like, hey man, I always wanted to see what happened. They want to. It's good to get them involved in the finished product and that, yeah. isn't it? So they know what what they're doing absolutely you know um, what their sort of efforts are yeah. going towards going to something and they can show their family yeah go hey yeah I designed this yeah as opposed to feeling like you know they can feel isolated can't they yeah, just, absolutely yeah I love that man oh last one I want to ask you is um, you, you and Ben's aspirations for the business say within you know give it a five year window where do you want to be in five years where do you see yourselves 
I know well. I know exactly where I want to be, um, and it's obviously really just a very well um, oiled machine that actually and it grows autonomously mm -hmm. um, and it grows naturally mm -hmm. um, and it actually will. Um, uh, you know, you know, if you want to step out for you know a couple of months, you can. Yeah, but I don't think I want. I'm, at the moment, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I love what I do. The um, and a lot of people can probably see that. But the um, if we want to, um, we want to obviously bring in different, um, and not just residential, um, but we want to really hone in on residential mm -hmm. um, and make sure that's really iced out. Um, that we're producing good fluent work at a large capacity, um, and just and literally be the industry in that. Yeah, like we are the people you called. Yeah, um, and yeah, and then obviously then bringing in the different um, avenues um, and doing some more cool shit, really. And what do you just lastly, what do you think that would look like in regards to employ like you know employee numbers to reach that sort of target of being the industry best industry leader? Do you have any, any idea what that? You think that might look like? Um, um, I think actually it's really interesting with um, productivity and um, productivity conversations and um, using technology to the best of its abilities. Um, you don't necessarily need to grow much more. We're, the team that we have has the capacity and has the ability to grow much larger. Mm, that's um, And it's already poking in that right direction. Mm -hmm. um, and we know we have the team for it. And your warehouse and everything will facilitate yeah, that? Yeah, that's going to facilitate a lot. Um, do we believe we'll outgrow it? Uh, yeah, obviously, definitely. Um, but at what point um, and how can, we, how can we adapt other um, options and opportunities to stay where we are mm -hmm. um but then there's a there's a time where you need to go nut where we've burst at the seams here yeah um we already know um where our capabilities are within that that we feel as though that is now um but we are a lot hell a lot better at um using utilizing additional tools mm -hmm. um to produce more output yeah um so yeah, we're a very. I feel like we're a very adaptable and very versatile company. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've met a lot of good people along the way, especially in the time we've built. Um, and we've brought on a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. Well, mate, you're a great operator and someone I really look up to. I reckon you're, you're going to smash that man. So thanks heaps for coming on today, mate. Yeah, I appreciate it. Have fun. Legend. Good on you. Thank you for listening to another White Collar Tradie podcast. Make sure you're following our podcast sponsor, Plumify, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and check out their website at www.plumify.com.au.